Hello, everybody. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to explain how to analyze the data from a simple experiment using a free software program called JASP. If you haven't already downloaded it, Google it, J-A-S-P, and there's some really simple download instructions to install it on your computer. Once that's done, you're ready to go. So the first thing we got to talk about is the simple workflow. What you're going to do is collect some data, enter it into Excel or Google Sheets. Then you're going to need to export it out of there using a CSV or text file and bring it into JASP. The reason you need to do that is JASP doesn't have any facilities for actually entering data. It's just for analyzing data. So to start, consider the simple experiment where you're trying to figure out do people who use a cell phone get into more accidents, walk slowly, than people who don't use a cell phone? And so one thing you've got to figure out is what kind of data you're collecting. We're going to talk about two different kinds of data, dichotomous data or continuous data. So if you're collecting dichotomous data, what you're doing is collecting an outcome that either does occur or doesn't occur. So for example, you might want to know if people who are using a cell phone are more likely to sort of be blindly tumbling around the world and getting into a collision. So what you're coding is yes, a person got into a collision or no, they didn't get into a collision. And then you're noting whether or not they were using a cell phone. Alternatively, you might want to know if using a cell phone makes people walk more slowly, say when they're going down the stairs. So in this case, your dependent variable is continuous. It can take any of a number of values going from low to high in order. So someone might walk slowly, taking eight seconds, they might go a little faster, seven, really fast, six or five seconds. And so those are our two kinds of data that we're going to sort of uh, explore using JASP. Uh, the other thing you have to realize is that in this particular experiment, we've got a between subjects design. We're going to be observing some people who are using a cell phone and then other people who aren't using a cell phone. And so that between subjects design affects how we set up the data. So the first step is to imagine you've collected your data and now we're going to take a look at how you set up those data in Excel or Sheets. Okay, so what we're looking at here is some example data. This is a data file that has basically random data that I made up in it. And the first thing you notice about this data file is that it's organized into a series of columns. And most of the columns name a variable. So for example, column B here is going to specify no cell, in which case there's going to be a zero in the column, or cell phone, a one in the column. Column C here is going to be collision, one, zero. It's a dichotomous variable. One if the person got in a collision, zero if the person did not get in the collision. Column D here is going to be um, a continuous variable. And so this would be the kind of column you'd enter if you were measuring, say, how fast someone's walking when they were walking down the, the stairs. So we've got walking time in seconds in column D. The first thing to really think about in terms of the organization of this spreadsheet is that every column is a variable and every row in this case is a participant. So starting with row two here, we've got participant one, then participant two, three, four, five, and so on, going down the rows. A couple of notes here. Um, number one, it's often nice to name your variables in the first row of your spreadsheet. So you want to do that. And also to name your variables in a way that's kind of informative. I like to put a lot of information in my variable name. So this variable name, which is going to show up in JASP, is no cell zero cell one. And so that tells us what the variable is. And it also tells us a little bit about how the variable's coded. So zero means this participant was not using their cell phone. One means they were using their cell phone. And then we've got collision one here. So collision is coded as a one. And then we can assume that a zero means no collision. 
And then walk time, that's pretty straightforward. It's the walking time, and I put the sort of um, that it's in seconds in the variable name. Okay, so that's the organization of your data file. Take a close look and try to match your data to something kind of like this. One key thing to realize is that when you save your data to use in JASP, you have to save it out as a text file or a CSV file. JASP won't open an Excel file. Do a save as, and then just select CSV here. And so it will save as a CSV, and I'll replace that one because I already saved it. Okay, so now we've saved our data out from Excel as a CSV. Next, we're gonna go into JASP to analyze the data. So let's take a look. So here is the start screen for JASP. What you do to open up your data, just go to that little hamburger there, go open, and usually using computer browse is the easiest way to go. And there's our random data, our CSV file. And so it opens up in JASP. There it is. So let's do two analyses. We'll do our analysis of the uh, dichotomous variable, whether or not a person got into a collision. And then we'll also do a, an analysis of our continuous variable, how long it took them to walk down those stairs when they're using their cell versus not using their cell. So let's start with the dichotomous variable. The way you analyze that is you'll use a chi-square test. That test assesses the degree to which the frequencies you've observed in a table relating your independent variable, in this, case, in this case cell versus no cell, and your dependent variable, in this case collision versus no collision, uh, it tests the degree to which those two variables are basically independent of each other. If they're independent of each other, there's no relationship, but if they're dependent, then there is a relationship and there may be a different rate of collisions for the cell condition and no cell condition. So the way you find that out is you go to frequencies, go to contingency tables, and you wanna take your variables. Remember we have no cell, cell here, and then our dichotomous variable, collision, no collision, and put them in the rows and columns of a two by two contingency table. JASP automatically does a chi-square based on entering those two variables into your contingency table. And that chi-square is output on the bottom underneath the contingency table. So you can see it right here. What you've got is the results of the chi-square test. And so let's take a look at this contingency table and the chi-square test. First of all, the contingency table has two rows. In this case, row one, is our participants who did not use a cell phone. And the second row, cell one, is our participants who used a cell phone. And then the columns on the table are whether or not they got into a collision. So you can see here, we've got a total of 18 participants who are not using their cell, 29 who are using their cell phone. And out of those 18, four who are not using their cell phone got into a collision. And 24 out of the 29 who were using their cell phone were using their collision. Or were, were 24 out of 29 subjects who were using their cell phone got into a collision. And so there's a big difference in proportions here in terms of who got into a co collision, depending on whether or not they're using your cell phone. And that's sort of what the chi-square test assesses. So our results down here are associated with a p-value and a chi-square value. The p-value here represents the probability that if you did this experiment over and over again with the same number of subjects, the same population of subjects, and there were actually nothing there, that you'd observe a test value this big. So again, what that p-value represents, if you did the experiment over and over again and there were nothing there, there was, you know, your hypothesis were basically more or less wrong the probability you get a test value that big, in this case, is really small. And so that means we can have some confidence that there's a real difference in the proportions of people who get into collisions when they are 
and aren't using their cell phone. And so generally what you're looking for is that nice, really small p-value, and that tells you your results may well be for real. Okay, so that's how a chi-square test works on dichotomous data. Let's now look at what would happen if you collected continuous data, okay? And we're gonna do a t-test to do the significance test on the continuous data. So let's close down our contingency tables and now go to t-tests up here in JASP. And we're gonna use classical t-tests and we're gonna use independent samples t-tests. So what that kind of test allows you to do is compare two different groups of things or people. And that's good for our between subjects experiment because some participants were in one condition, other participants were in another condition. That contrasts with a within subjects experiment where each participant was in both of your conditions. And so we don't have that. We've got two different groups of participants, one using their cell phones, the other not using their cell phones in our different conditions. So that's why we need to use an independent samples t-test. So you select that and what you get is a little screen that asks you, number one, your grouping variable. That is a variable that are no cell versus cell that tells which group each participant's in. So let's put that down in grouping variables. And then our variables here, this is basically our dependent variable. And let's put our walking time here. So that's our continuous measure of something, our continuous variable. And what we can see here is it's done the first part of our independent samples t-test. When you do these, it's really nice also to print out your descriptive statistics. You wanna know the mean scores in each of your conditions. So let's click descriptives right there. And then we're gonna get below our uh, p-values and t-values, the means and standard deviation and also standard error. And if you want, you can even go ahead and do a plot. It takes a moment to do that. And there's our plot of our two averages. So what we're looking at here in the plot is it looks like people are going maybe a little faster when they're not using their cell, a, a lower walking time, and a little slower when they're using their cell phone. That's reflected in the means here. So you can see we've got a 13 second mean among our participants who are using their cell phone, and then an 18 second or 11 second mean, sorry, in the participants who are not using their cell phone. And as we go up here, this is the results of the statistical test, assessing the degree to which we can be confident that this is for real. And as you can see here, this p-value is a little larger than the p-value we had last time, it's 0.093. And so that's gonna be maybe a little too big for us to be confident that we've got an effect that's for real. So once again, what that p-value tells you, maybe you can start repeating this after me. If you did the experiment over and over again, and there were actually nothing there, this is the probability that you'll get a test statistic, in this case, the t-value, and more or less a difference in means of, as big as you saw it, of that size or bigger. And so what we're looking at here, to rephrase slightly, is the probability that if you did this experiment over and over again, you'd observe an effect this big if in fact there were nothing there. And so again, we're looking for a nice small p-value. Really, we want it to be below 0.05, 0.01 is even better. And this p-value is bigger than 0.05. So we shouldn't be very confident in this case in the difference between our means, you would call this difference non-significant. Okay, so that's how you do a test of um, the significance of a continuous variable and a test of the significance of a dichotomous variable. So as a reminder, we're using our contingency tables and our chi-square test to test the significance of a difference basically in proportions and then our independent samples t-test for our between subjects experiment to test a difference in the average uh, between two conditions in a continuous measure. Okay, so you've done all your analyses and now you wanna save the results of those analyses so you can write up your paper. 
One nice way to do that in JASP is to save out the results of the analyses as an HTML file. So you go to your hamburger and you can go export results. You can export it onto your computer. You can browse through, find your place where you want to save your stuff. In this case, we're saving stuff in our four video folder and it saves it out as an HTML file. We'll replace that because we already did that once. And that lets you open your results in any web browser. And so that's how you analyze data with JASP. I hope you found this useful.